Hi all. I'm in isolation at the moment, so I thought I'd do a video on this. Now, you're probably wondering what this is. This is a custom PDB designed by Mac Daddy FPV, and he kindly sent it to me. Uh, it is designed to run um, HD0 on manual wings without any flight controller. Now, on the back, you can see wing board for HD0 by Mac Daddy FPV. And it's a F411, it's a custom INAV 4.1.0 build. Now, just a quick glance over it. It's got battery in or VBAT in on this side. Now these are all common. So you can um, power, like direct power in um, and link them if you need to. On this side, you have two UARTs but one has a VBAT. So UART1 has the 5 volt, which would be, say, for your um, receiver. And then UART2 has the VBAT. Now, from what I can gather, that is where you would solder the HD0 VTX. You'd want to get the pure VBAT straight into it um, if you are running I would say up to four volt max. Um, sorry, not four volt max, four S max into that. And uh, it sh you should be able to put a cap on this side to help filter it. So my plan is to connect the HD0 VTX up to this side and a receiver up to this side and then get all your um, power consumptions through there. It does look very well made. Um, just go quick glance of it. There are a few things that I would change personally. Uh, one would be the spacing on these UARTs pins. I would actually space them perfectly for the um, the DuPont so you can just put so, um, pin headers on and then just plug and play. Another one that I would change is this USB-C. I would actually, I, I like the USB-C, it's very robust. However, sticking up like this, it's a very good chance of it being knocked off. Uh, what I would suggest is a change is to make it flat so that it would plug in from this side. Should also make it easier with certain builds as well. Um, you know, you might be able to mount it vertically inside, right down. Uh, though most people would have like a little bay, I guess that would fit this down. But you know, a right at right angle, this wouldn't make a, a difference too much either. So um, let me wire it up, wire it all up, and um, we'll see what it can do. All right. So I have wired up the HD zero. Freestyle VTX to UART2 with the VBAT. Uh, this extra wire here is for Smart Audio, which doesn't uh, isn't working on INAV at the moment. Uh, the only receiver that I had available was the Nano Diversity, but um, thinking about it, it's probably actually a really good idea. So, if you're kind of confused on why you wouldn't get just a flight controller. Um, the reason being is this is a lot less weight uh, and I can power that just from like a normal uh, PH 2.0 um, connector instead of this XT60 but that's just all I had at the moment and the theory behind it would be is you'd connect your receiver to the PDB which will give you the VTX control Plus, it'll also give you the, um, the the telemetry for the receiver on the OSD, uh, and yeah, like I said, also the the VTX control. Then you would have PWM output enabled on the receiver to your servo. So that would be your um, your Elevons, you know, and then your um, your throttle so you only need three outputs and then you'd be good so yeah it's uh it's all wired up 
I just have a camera, MIPI, antenna, stuff like that. Uh, let's plug her in and see what she can do. All right, as you can see, it is connected. I do have a red light on my crossfire. Let me turn my radio on. And uh, yeah, there we go. So uh, as you can see, the OSD is displaying um, the battery voltage in the bottom right hand corner, right down, yeah, wait, right down there, yep. Um, and then we also have the uh, video transmitter telemetry up here can't get to it just right um, and then also the crossfire uh, right there that's all your crossfire data um, you do have full uh, video transmitter control through here so you know if I wanted to change modes I want to change power levels that's all available, so this should go up to... Oh, I haven't unlocked it. Looks like I need to do the unlock. Um, but that would be your... Um, your VTX controls is using the standard HD0 um, stick commands and uh, changing your power levels and stuff like that. Um, I, this is about everything that I could get on to the OSD. Um, there is a lot more, but it doesn't work. This doesn't have a gyro. It doesn't have an accelerometer. It doesn't have a current sensor. Um, I'm guessing if you... I don't know how... Yeah, I'm guessing if you had a GPS attached to it, then you could have GPS, but then you'd get no receiver. Um, I don't know why you'd do that, because uh, iNav would set home point when you arm, and then you'd have no receiver to arm. But in, in reality, like what it is, is a low-cost um, PDB for the HD0 VTX. Let me just put a bit more cooling on that. Uh, it is a low-cost PDB for the HD0 VTX to run um, an OSD without a flight controller. You know, a Matec flight controller is starting at around about $60, dollars uh, and it can go up from there, and they're a lot bigger, a lot, lot heavier. Um, yes, you do get a lot more functions, but this should be able to be manufactured for about... $20, I could be wrong, you need to check with Mac Daddy for that. But as far as I'm aware, this is absolutely all you need for a flying wing, you know. You need the voltages, the on time is perfect, the, uh, I know you can't get channel yet, but it's digital, I'm sure that's gonna be implemented in later on. You got your Crossfire RX telemetry on the left hand side there and your um your name and so uh first impressions of this is very very good i think it's very well built uh obviously you if you start adding extra stuff like a current sensor um and then you might as well just add a gyro and everything like that and then you might as well just have a flight controller right but this isn't a flight controller just just be sure like this is not a flight controller this is just an osd pdb and looking at the board there's a lot of space, a lot of space. I think this could be designed smaller. I really do. I reckon you could fit this down probably in about half the size, you know, and really narrow it down. And then, like I said, move this up, change these to um, dew point spacing. It's 1.25, I could be wrong. Um, and then go from there. But yeah, in reality, this this is great. This is exactly what you need for um, for wing pilots um, who just 
want to fly manually. So big thanks to Mac Daddy FPV for sending this to me. I can't wait to get it into a wing. Now that I have it running, uh, it is going to be very, very easy. Um, though what I'd probably do is disconnect the positive and negative on the receiver and power that separately using a Beck, which then will power my servers using the adapter and then just have the, the TX and RX going straight to this and they'll be exactly the same uh, as what we got now. So that's pretty, pretty easy to um, implement that. But yeah, uh, stay tuned. Uh, I will get this in the air. Like I said, I am currently in isolation at the moment, so I can't get out to test it. Um, I do need to unlock that, which is good. But um, thanks for watching, guys. If you liked, subscribe and hit the like button.